I mean, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> why? Hey folks, it's Abby, and today I thought I would go through, s thank you plane, some of the unfinished series that I have. Thank you plane. So some of these I own all of the books in the series and I just haven't got around to them yet. Some of them I don't own any of the rest of the books and I need to buy them. I have some physical copies here to show and I'll have to just cry over editing for the ones that I don't. So I have a list, I'm gonna go through them. <laughs> First up, the ones that I don't have here. The Roman Mysteries series. So I have been trying to work my way through this series for well over a decade and a half now. I will eventually have all of them. I will eventually have read all of them. That is all I'm saying, other than they are written by a historian, so they're very accurate, and they are, follow four children solving mysteries in ancient Rome. You should read them. Then a series that I only recently started, but I've owned for many years, and that is Kathy's series. I'm not sure what the series is actually called, but the first book is Kathy's book, then Kathy's key and Kathy's ring. I owned key and ring for over a decade, but didn't own the first book, so I couldn't read them. I need to get around to this. This follows a it's a thriller contemporary with a supernatural twist of immortal people. And it follows a teenage girl as she kind of is introduced into that world. The Blood Red Road trilogy. I have Raging Star and whatever the second book is, Rebel Heart, and I've just never read them. I own them both, the other one's over there. This is a dystopian where a brother and sister are separated and they have to try and find each other and it's written in very weird grammar so you have to get used to it, but I really enjoyed the first book. The Labyrinth series, the Languedoc series. The second book is Sepulchre, the third book is Citadel. These are more of companion books rather than direct series, but I recently finished Labyrinth and I really need to get on with the rest of the books in the trilogy. The books all follow one thing in modern day, so 2005, 2007, 2009, and one thing many centuries ago. Labyrinth is set in the 1200s, this one is set in the 1800s. I'm not sure where Citadel is set. Then a series that I only just started, and that is Sabriel by Garth Nix. I only own this one, I don't own the rest, and I adored this, and I'm so mad at myself that I didn't read this when I was younger, because I would have adored it, and I still do adore it. So much, so much. This is going to be one of my favourites, I need to read the rest of this series. This follows a young girl whose father traverses death and pushes souls into death when they are resisting, and one day he is captured and she has to help. Then the Legend trilogy. I've read Legend, I've read Prodigy, but I haven't read Champion. Why? Uh all of the planes fly. This is a YA dystopian where one girl comes from the rich side, a boy comes from the poor side, and they end up fighting together to bring down the tyrants. The Baby Ganesh series. I've read the first two books and one of the like one pound books that came out. The first book is The Unexpected Her Inheritance of Inspector Chopra. This is a cosy mystery where a retired police inspector living in India is gifted a baby ele elephant and he helps him in his investigations. Yes, it's that ridiculous. Yes, I love it. An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. That series. I've read Ember. I've read Torch. Have not read three and four. And Caitlin from My Cheshire Rabbit's gonna murder me. This is a kind of um, Roman military inspired fantasy world created by Sabah Tahir. It is absolutely gorgeous and I need to, I need to finish off the series. Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lily Taylor. I didn't think I was going to enjoy this book and then I absolutely fucking loved it. So I need to read the rest of the books in this series. This is a portal fantasy going between our world and this magical world with a main character who has naturally blue hair and who is not quite what she seems. The Murderbot series. The first book being All Systems Red. Martha Wells is the author, and this is about a an android who has been able to override its programming, it now has feelings and emotions, and that kind of screws up everything that it's supposed to be doing. It's amazing, it's hilarious, it called itself Murderbot, and I need to read more of these books. A Wish After Midnight by Zeta Elliot is the first book in a duology that I really really enjoyed. I read it at the beginning of the year with Caitlin for the Small Press Book Club and we do want to continue on with that book club in the future so hopefully we can read book two. A Wish After Midnight is very similar to the classic novel Passing in which a young black girl is sent back in time to the 1800s, I think the US Civil War, and has to try and survive as a black woman in that time, before she is returned to present day. The Nevernight series. Now I know J. Kristoff is a piece of shit, but I already own God's Grave and Dark Dawn, gifted to me by the wonderful Carrie, and I do really like the first book. I read Nevernight and I really enjoyed it. I already own these, I'm not financially helping him in any way, 
and I will not buy any more of his works, but I still do want to read these. The first book is about a young girl who watched her father be hung for a stupid reason and she becomes an assassin and then goes to fancy assassin school with lots of risk of death and stupidity stabbity. You see why I like? Then the companion novel to The Tattooist of Auschwitz, which is Silke's Journey, both by Heather Morris. This is a fictionalised telling of a true story of a young girl trying to survive Auschwitz. This is gonna break my heart. The Thursday Next novels. I've read the first five, so there's at least one more that I need to read. These follow Thursday Next, that is the name of the character, and in the first book she ends up going into Jane Eyre because the book characters are moving about and things are changing, things are altering in the physical books that we have in the print universe, and she needs to fix it. This is set in an alternate reality based in the 80s, and Jasper Ford is able to then play around with the history and the timelines. Thursday has a pet dodo. It's stupid, it's wonderful, it's fantastic, and I need to read more. Then, as hinted at just there, the Discworld series. I am only six books in. I need to finish these. These are written by Terry Pratchett, and uh, these are a massive high fantasy series. The series is 42 books long, don't make me explain it to you. I'm sure you've heard about Discworld before. If you haven't, welcome to the internet. Google. Then we have the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, with A Gathering of Shadows being the next one, by V.E. Schwab. This is a world where there are four Londons, black, white, red and grey, and a man who can travel between them and he ends up um, fucking shit up when he does stuff he's not supposed to, and meets a woman who he takes with him occasionally. That is the worst explanation you've ever heard of A Dark Shade of Magic, you are welcome. Then we've got The Cain Chronicles by Rick Riordan. This is his Egyptian mythology series. I've read the first book, but I haven't read the second two, and I really do want to get to them. It is just Egyptian mythology, Rick Riordan. You can guess what happens. Then the Centuries trilogy. So I'm currently in the middle of reading Fall of Giants by Ken Follett. These two next books there are set in World War II and in the Cold War, and they follow on. I already own them, even though I haven't finished Fall of Giants. I need to read them. Then we have The Four Treasures novels by Caroline Logan. As of filming, I have not yet read book two, The Cauldron of Life, or book three, The Sword of Light. I hopefully should have by the time these go up. I should have at least read book two. This is a YA Scottish mythology story written by a Scottish author where we follow a very grumpy teenage girl who becomes uh, the bodyguard for two selkies, which are magical creatures which can change between human and seal. It's fantastic, honestly. Not enough people read this series, you need to pick it up. Then we have the Alice series by Christina Henry. So I've read Alice, but I haven't read Red Queen, and I think that there's another one out as well. This is a dark adaptation of the Alice in Wonderland fairy tale. Then we have The Eagle of the Ninth Chronicles by Rosemary Sutcliffe. I've read the first book, because this is a bind up of three. I haven't read the other two. This is based on the Roman Ninth Legion in historical Britain, and their time in the Brittany Isles. I don't know much more because I first read the first book when I was 12 and I forgot it. <laughs> and then last, but my no means least, is Red Queen. The Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. I have Warstorm left, that is it, and then I finish the series. It is massive, the writing is small and I struggle through these books as quite slow reads, so um, I've been putting it off. <laughs> and those are the series that I've started that I need to continue reading, and I'm probably missing some. But those are the ones I could remember. <laughs> Let me know down below guys which ones I need to pick up next, like guilt trip me into reading these please. Caitlin, shut up, I'm going to read these, just shush. But for all of the other ones, guilt trip me into reading them because some of them have been on my TBR for a ridiculously long time. Thank you so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video please do hit like. All of the triggers for these books will be in the description as always, and if you'd like to see some more from me please do hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Bye folks! Thank you.